Where do the Serbs really come from? For centuries, this question has puzzled historians, linguists, and scientists alike. Some have long believed that the Serbs descended purely from Slavic tribes who migrated into the Balkans in the early Middle Ages. Others have argued that their roots run far deeper, into the first civilizations that inhabited this land thousands of years before the Slavs ever arrived. Now, for the first time, modern science is giving us real answers. DNA testing, archaeology, and forensic studies are revealing a picture that is far more complex and far more fascinating than anyone could have imagined. The discoveries are nothing short of shocking. They challenge centuries of assumptions and rewrite what we thought we knew about the ancestry of the Serbian people. And this isn't just a story of migrations or invasions. It's a story written in bones, in the soil, and in the very DNA that flows through generations of Serbs today. So stay with me until the end, because we are about to uncover hidden truths about Serbian ancestry, truths that could change how we think about the history of the Balkans forever. But before we dive deeper, let me ask you, do you think the Serbs are purely Slavic in origin, or do you suspect that their roots go further back? Comment below. Your opinion might just be closer to the truth than you think. Long before anyone called themselves Serbian, this land was already a patchwork of thriving communities. Ancient tribes, some almost forgotten by history, left traces of their lives across the hills, rivers, and valleys. From the banks of the Danube to the rolling plains of central Serbia, these people planted crops, raised animals, and built settlements. Archaeologists have uncovered stunning evidence of their lives. Tools, pottery, and ornaments have survived thousands of years, offering us a glimpse into societies that were sophisticated, resilient, and deeply connected to the land they inhabited. One of the most remarkable discoveries comes from caves along the Danube River. Inside, human remains dating back more than 7,000 years were found. And when scientists studied these bones, they realized something incredible. These were the remains of some of Europe's first farmers. These people had domesticated animals, cultivated wheat and barley, and created permanent villages. They were not just survivors, they were innovators, laying the groundwork for thousands of years of continuous human habitation in the Balkans. But it wasn't only peaceful farmers who walked these lands. Archaeological sites reveal warrior cultures too. Graves from the Bronze Age and Iron Age often contain weapons, swords, spearheads, and shields buried alongside their owners. These artifacts tell us that defense, honor, and combat were central to life in the ancient Balkans. Communities weren't just surviving, they were protecting their homes and their legacies. The Balkans, after all, have always been a crossroads. To the south lay the powerful cities of ancient Greece. To the west, the coast opened toward Italy and the wider Mediterranean world. To the east stretched the rich plains of what would become Thrace and later Byzantine territories. Every civilization that rose in the region left its mark sometimes in ruins, sometimes in culture, and as we are now discovering, sometimes in DNA. Scientists studying burial practices, pottery styles, and settlement layouts have uncovered a startling fact. The land that would eventually become Serbia was home to many distinct cultures over the millennia. Each group brought its own traditions, technologies, and genetic imprint. This raises a critical question. When the Serbs finally emerge in historical records centuries later, how much of these older populations' legacies survived in their blood? Were the ancient farmers, warriors, and traders entirely replaced by newcomers? Or did their lineage continue quietly, invisibly, into the present? Most history books tell a familiar story. Around the 6th and 7th centuries AD, 
large groups of Slavic tribes moved into the Balkans. They came from the north and east, traveling down rivers and through dense forests, eventually reaching the lands that would become modern Serbia. According to traditional accounts, the Serbs were part of this movement, a branch of the Slavic world settling among the mountains and valleys of the Central Balkans. These early Slavic settlers brought their own language, customs and social structures, all of which tied them to a larger cultural sphere spanning Eastern and Central Europe. Chroniclers of the era, particularly Byzantine historians, describe the Slavs as a people arriving in great numbers. But the accounts are vague. Were these waves of migrants aggressive invaders, peaceful settlers, or a slow and gradual blending of populations? The sources rarely offer a clear answer. Archaeology provides more insight than the written records. When researchers examine settlements from the 6th and 7th centuries, they find a surprising degree of continuity with the past. Pottery styles didn't change abruptly. They evolved. Burial traditions show a mixture of old and new customs. Tools and domestic artifacts display adaptations rather than complete replacements. These signs point to coexistence rather than wholesale replacement. This raises a profound question. If the Serbs were indeed Slavic, how much of their ancestry truly came from these northern migrants and how much was inherited from the peoples who had lived in the Balkans for thousands of years prior? For centuries, the answer remained elusive, locked away in layers of soil, hidden in artifacts and silent in ancient graves. That is, until modern DNA testing arrived on the scene. The revolutionary work of geneticists has allowed scientists to extract DNA from ancient skeletons that have rested in Serbian soil for thousands of years. Suddenly, graves that had been silent for millennia began to speak. And what they revealed was astonishing. Analysis of Bronze Age and Iron Age remains showed a surprising continuity with the modern Serbian population. Certain maternal lineages, passed from mother to child, can be traced directly from ancient farmers and villagers to people living in Serbian towns and villages today. In some cases, these lineages appear almost identical, linking the past to the present in an unbroken chain. The paternal side tells a slightly more complex story. Many genetic markers common among modern Serbs trace back to Slavic tribes that arrived during the 6th century. But other markers reach much further into prehistory, connecting present-day Serbs to the first farmers, herders, and warriors of the ancient Balkans. This combination paints a vivid picture. The Serbian population is neither purely Slavic nor purely ancient Balkan. It is both, a living fusion of newcomers and long-established residents. In fact, recent studies suggest that roughly half of Serbian genetic markers can be traced directly to early Balkan farmers and herders, while the other half reflects Slavic ancestry with smaller contributions from Celtic, Roman, and nomadic steppe populations. This genetic mixture challenges the old assumption that Slavic migration completely replaced previous inhabitants. On the contrary, the DNA shows that local populations endured, mixing with newcomers to form a distinct, resilient people. The implications of these findings extend beyond Serbia itself. When scientists compared Serbian DNA to that of neighboring nations, remarkable patterns emerged. Serbs share strong genetic ties with other South Slavs, including Croats, Bosniaks, Montenegrins, and Bulgarians. But the nuances are fascinating. For example, while both Serbs and Croats have a strong Slavic foundation, Serbs carry slightly more genetic markers from ancient Balkan populations, suggesting a deeper connection to the land itself. To the east, comparisons with Bulgarians reveal another surprise. Bulgarians showed traces of genetic influence from Turkic and steppe peoples who swept through the region centuries ago. Serbs, however, have less of this influence, 
indicating that their ancestry remained more tightly linked to the Balkans and the Slavic migrations. Even more astonishing are the connections with Albanians and Romanians. Despite speaking very different languages and having distinct cultures, these populations share ancient Balkan ancestry with the Serbs. Certain maternal and paternal lineages trace back to the same prehistoric tribes, hinting at a time when ancestors of these modern peoples lived side by side, long before modern national identities existed. The story of Serbian ancestry doesn't stop with the Slavs. Long before the Slavic migrations, the Balkans were at the heart of one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen, Rome. Over 2,000 years ago, Roman legions marched into the region, building fortresses along the Danube, carving roads through mountains and founding towns that served as centers of trade, governance, and culture. Everywhere the Romans went, they left more than stone and brick behind. They left people. Soldiers, administrators, traders, and settlers arrived from all corners of the empire, Italy, the Mediterranean, even North Africa. Archaeologists in Serbia have uncovered graves from this period that reveal a surprising diversity of origins. Roman-era skeletons show individuals from multiple regions, hinting at a melting pot long before the word existed. Modern DNA studies confirm that these settlers left their mark, not just in ruins or artifacts, but in the very bloodlines of the population. Certain maternal lineages from Roman-era graves can still be traced in modern Serbs. Women who lived in villas and fortresses along the Danube may have living descendants walking the streets of Belgrade today. The legacy of Rome is not just in culture, law, and architecture. It survives in DNA. As the Western Roman Empire fell, the Eastern Roman Empire, known today as Byzantium, maintained its hold over the Balkans. Byzantine influence reshaped cities, religion, and society. Pagan temples gave way to churches, Latin inscriptions faded to Greek, and Christian rituals became central to everyday life. Art, architecture, and language absorbed Byzantine elements, leaving a lasting cultural imprint. Yet DNA evidence shows that Byzantine dominance didn't erase ancestry. Maternal and paternal lineages survived, quietly bridging the ancient Balkans to the medieval Slavic world. Modern Serbs carry a living memory of both the Roman and Byzantine past, not just in monuments or manuscripts, but in their very genes. But the Roman and Byzantine layers are only part of the story. Long before either empire, another remarkable people left their mark, the Celts. Known for their sweeping migrations across Europe, Celtic tribes arrived in the Balkans around 300 to 400 BC. Archaeologists in Serbia have uncovered Celtic treasures, decorated swords, bronze jewelry, coins inscribed with Celtic symbols, and graves where warriors were buried with distinctive weapons. The Celts were never permanent rulers here. Unlike the Romans, they didn't build lasting cities or impose empires. Instead, they moved through the region, interacting with local populations, sometimes blending, sometimes clashing. Yet their genetic and cultural footprint survived. Certain artifacts discovered in central Serbia mirror styles found hundreds of miles west, suggesting an extensive Celtic network across Europe. DNA evidence, though subtler, confirms that some Celtic ancestry persists in the modern Serbian gene pool a faint but fascinating echo of a people long gone. The layers continue through the centuries. After the Celts and Byzantines, the Balkans became part of the Ottoman Empire. For over 400 years, the Ottomans ruled Serbia, influencing politics, religion, and society. Cities flourished as trade hubs, and mosques, bridges, and marketplaces reshaped the landscape. Yet surprisingly, the genetic imprint of the Ottomans on modern Serbs is modest. While certain regions showed traces of genes from Anatolian or Middle Eastern populations, the majority of Serbian ancestry remains deeply tied to the Balkans, Slavs, Romans, and Celts. The Ottoman period shaped culture and society, but DNA reveals that local populations endured, preserving the backbone of ancestry through centuries of empire, conflict, and change. 
When we consider all these layers together, Slavic, Roman, Byzantine, Celtic, and Ottoman, a picture emerges that is far richer than any simple narrative. The Serbs are not the product of a single migration, invasion, or empire. They are the product of thousands of years of blending, survival, and adaptation. Each new wave left traces, but the people who were already here endured. They merged, adapted, and carried forward their genetic legacy, forming a living bridge between the ancient past and modern times. This complex history challenges the idea of purity and ancestry. The Serbs are not just Slavic or just Balkan, Roman, or Celtic. They are all of these things, layered together in a unique and enduring genetic story. The DNA of modern Serbs tells a story of resilience, of continuity, and of a people shaped by the ebb and flow of history across millennia. If you've enjoyed exploring these hidden layers of Serbian DNA, let us know in the comments. Have you ever discovered unexpected ancestry in your family? Or perhaps you've always wondered about the ancient roots of your people in the Balkans? Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you found this journey into the past fascinating, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload.